Greetings, dear ones, I am Cryon of Maganing Service. I've said that so many times. I've become used to this. Before human beings, some believing, some not believing, all of which I know, all of whom I know, every single one, the family member, every single one known by God, every single energy here, available to read so clearly because I've known you for so long. The truth is this, that I am a sister, I am a brother, I am a piece of God. And I'm not something to be worshipped any more than your sister and brother on earth are. I am family. And the only reason for these communications and the only reason I would be here at all is to sit at your feet and to wash them and to give you information about what you've done, the potentials of where you are and what you're about to do. And it's always been that way. There's never been a time when it's been different. Oh, there have been many who have made a lot of it. They said it was this and it was that. Human being, you may not believe this is happening. Human being, you may say this is just the antics of the man. You say it's a fraud, it's a fake, I'll tell you this. It's going to be hard to tell that to the one who's going to go away with a healing today. Sitting on the edge you are, human, you know who I'm talking to, you've been here before, you know who I'm talking to. That's why you came, isn't it? Isn't it about time that you moved into that Akash? Isn't it about time you mined that place that you're now beginning to understand you own? My goodness, why would have you, why would you have gone through this? Lifetime after lifetime, why would you do it? And the questions have been asked over and over. Why, Cryon, do we go over and over on these lifetimes? And the answer is this, so that you can put yourself into a place and glean the result of the ones that made the most sense, the ones where there was no disease, the one where there was balance, the one where there was talent that you need now, light worker, to proceed on this planet and create what you came for. And part of that is to heal the DNA you came with today. Your actual blood will measure differently. Human being, now that's very 3D, isn't it? That's what you can do. Never been a more exciting time than this. Just seems like yesterday. Even for some of you. I can see myself talking to my partner. In the days when he really couldn't translate much. I'm doing it now. It all happens together. Even he can't believe the amount of time that's gone by. I am a lover of humanity. I instill that into those I'm with. It's a special time. Today's message, if there is one, not a lot different than many of the others except that you sit in a new energy. An energy you've only recently created, dear human beings. And now you're beginning to see the puzzle unfold. Well, there are still those sitting there saying, it's a human talking, really. Is it the human creating the energy in this room? How can that be? Some of you are starting to feel it. Could it be? Could it be that God is speaking through this man? Spirit is speaking through this man. And what is that definition of God? It's a man-made word, you know. God is the essence of the universe imbued into the human being. That's what God is. For I sit in front of entities of biological source and universal lineage. 
that are ageless. You always were and you always will be human being. And there are those who still don't believe this is real. Can't be happening. God doesn't talk like this to humans. Oh, yes. This is the way Spirit has always talked to human beings. Always. Always. Let me put it into your society for a moment. So you will understand this. Maybe this will relate to you. There's a man in a cell. Approximately 30, 35 years after the death of his master. And he is known as Saul. But he is not Saul, he's Paul. For the epiphany he had when he saw what was written and felt the energy of the master of love changed his very fabric. He understood human enablement and he wrote to his friends in Ephesia in Corinth and he was in jail and he told him about his joy he told him how amazing it was the information that he had from this master he never even met him that's Paul the Apostle and the letters he wrote became scripture in this culture and that scripture is known as the word of God <laughs> Now let me ask you, who is God when you're reading Corinthians? It's Paul the Apostle, because this is the way it works and that is called channeling. And that's the way it is, it always has been. And so here we are again with this attribute where there will be those who will listen with the ears of the one who delivers. And that puts you in a quantum state. We quantumize the audience. So that you're one with the message. And the message is this. It's about choice. What are you doing? What do you want to do? Where are you? What have you done? Choice. I am cryon. I am piece of, of the family that you are of. And that means that I'm not on the other side of the veil, unreachable, untouchable. I walk with each one of you daily because spirit walks with you daily. You don't think of this often enough. That as you walk out the door and you're done with the meditations, you're done with the channeling and you're in a social time. And perhaps you're going to go and, and have a nice dinner. All of those things and we walk out the door with you because we're in love with you. Because we're part of the process with you. And we know what you're going through. And nobody really thinks about that. Call us guides. Call us angels. Call us energy. Call us whatever you want to. You're never alone. What a promise. The one who doesn't believe it today... Gets the same amount of angels that walk out the door with him as with you. Did you know that? And what does that tell you about the love of God? What does it tell you? What's your choice? You have some choices right now. And you can fear what's coming. Because there are plenty of human beings who are going to tell you to fear 2012. Every single thing we have uttered for 20 years has been about this shift. What you have done, the potentials of what you can do, and the enlightened state that this planet has the potential to move into about now. <laughs> You're preparing for 2012. Brian, why would you say we're preparing for 2012 when the, when the galactic alignment might have actually happened before then? And I'll tell you because the world is, is thinking it's 2012. So let's just look at this in a 3D way. You're preparing for what most human beings feel might be a challenge. And it won't be. Not if lightworkers have their way. Now, 
I want to address those who are listening. I want to address those who may be reading this, and I want to tell you that 2012 <coughs> is not the end of time. And those who built the calendar got it right, and that is to say that they saw a cyclical arrangement, a vibratory increase for this planet affecting consciousness and vice versa. The crystalline grid, the minds didn't even know it would be here. For it wasn't on their calendar, was it? Created in approximately 2002 to carry the human consciousness, this crystalline was not in their prophecies, nor was it in the prophecies of Nostradamus. What does that tell you about this planet? You're looking at a new arrangement. Where do you stand in the fear department? What's your choice? What's your choice today? You want to fear it? You can, you know, if you choose. Or if you wish to, you can find out the truth. And look at it in the eyes that we've seen it and told you about for 20 years. This magic year, 2012, has the potential right now of being treated exactly like your millennium, the magic year of 2000. Lots of fear, wasn't there? Lots of scripture, wasn't there? Lots of quatrains, wasn't there? And what happened? Not much. And we're telling you that right now, as I sit in 2014, I'm giving you a message, isn't it interesting what didn't happen? So where do you sit on this subject, human beings, choice to fear or not to fear? For what you do today goes into the grid and stays there. It's a collective, you know. What's your participation, your choice today? When it comes to the economy, we've said it before, we said it in December. How many of you have the courage to celebrate the recession? And we'll say it again. Dear human being, in this country called America, congratulations for what you just did. Never in the history of humanity have they tackled the greed issue in a major force like this economy? One of the largest on earth, the most significant on earth, the most powerful on earth, and you chose to clean it up. And if you're looking at your media, it's a horror story. And if you're looking at your media, they're telling you it's going to last a long time. They're not really sure that you can climb out of it all. Congratulations for scaring everybody. <laughs> That's what light workers can do on this planet. They see it one way and really it's another. You're going to get through this. As you've got through the other ones. And in the process you're going to come out stronger. That's what pruning is. Well the tree looks pretty ugly, doesn't it, when you cut off all the branches. <laughs> but you know what happens when the sun comes out. The winter of spirituality is coming to a close and the spring is upon you and you will see and don't you understand it's got to affect more than just spiritual things if you're going to have a shift for the planet it's going to have to affect a mainstream and where does that mainstream exist the strongest <laughs> financial <laughs> and you're changing it the hardest things first I would say and perhaps at the same time, your politics, and you got a good start. Are you going to be afraid of it? Are you going to be one of those who's afraid of it? What's your choice today, listener, reader? For what you do is going to affect the crystalline, and that affects the planet. A light worker who makes a choice not to fear is worth a stadium filled with those who choose to fear. Did you know that? And the reason is because you got the light. That means that they're going to see in the dark from what you do. I know I've used the, the metaphor so many times, but it's the truth. 
What is your choice quantumly about the earth? Now we're going to get odd. If you didn't think channeling was odd enough to begin with, this is odd. Why are you here? What was your choice? Did you choose? What is your feeling on that one? Did you choose to come to the planet? If you are reading the words, if you're sitting in the chair, if you're listening to this, the chances are that you know you chose it. But that is the information that has been taught for a long time. And yet it's still odd. You mean I chose to come here and be here now? Oh, yes, you did. What is your lineage and what have you chosen to be your lineage, dear human being? Is it your choice to carry light? All choices. But the quantum choice is the one I wish to speak of now. The one that has your name on it in the cave of creation, part of the teaching of today. Do you realize your choice of today is going to change the very essence of that crystalline structure? And will affect who you come back as? Or did you think about that? Hmm. You chose to come in, in this planet, at this time. And that is significant, Lemurian. <laughs> Very significant. I'll say this again. Oh, there's so many of you say, I'm just ordinary. I go to work. I have a family. I'm in survival mode most of the time. I take care of myself. I take care of them. That's all I can do. Really? Then why are you here? Is that your choice to be a survivor? Why are you here? You're reading this. Why are you reading this? Or listening to it? What prompted you to do that, survivor? Or is there more? And you know there's more. Your very thoughts carry light. The very idea that you can raise your vibration on this planet carries the light of the earth. It's going to result within two generations of a very, very different planet. That's what we see. That's what we've always seen. From the very beginning, 20 years ago, Back then we would have said it was three generations. Now it's only two. Hmm. Time goes fast when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Lightworker, you are making a difference on this planet. And you are on schedule. There were those who would tell you, well, the choice to come during this time is a very odd one, metaphysician. Because <laughs> you've chosen a hard time to be here. Look what's going on on the planet. And in addition, you're going to hit 2012, and of course, you'll all die. <laughs> what a funny choice. Oh. And it is laughable, and it's worth a good chuckle. Because the opposite is what's in store. The love of God does not bring you to this place so that it can bury you in a dirt pile. It doesn't bring you here. So you can do a horrible death when the earth turns upside down and gets hit by a media. It doesn't do that. That's not why you're here. You came by choice. That was a choice. The choice was on the other side of the veil. Now you're here with the mind of a human being, not the mind of God. What do you choose now? You want to hold the light that you came to hold? Oh, it's no accident that you're in the chair, being here in this area where you'd listen to a channeler. Now, some of you are beginning to realize this is real. There is a voice coming from the other side of the veil, the veil and the voice is passionate because it's in love with you. Because it wants to honor you. And it wants to wash your feet. Are you listening? Detractor, are you listening? Unbeliever, are you listening to me? I'm telling you, your feet are being washed, even if you don't believe it, even if you don't want it. You're loved beyond measure, and you always will be, and there's no judgment of you walking out the door laughing. There is just none, because I know who you are, brother, sister. When it's all over, you take your last breath, we'll be together yet again. And we'll laugh about this day when you came and said, nah, not for me. 
creator of earth you are. You were there when it was molten. Oh, old souls, what's your choice today? You've got so many. What's your choice about healing? You want it or not? Well, you're not going to have it in a 3D mode. You're going to have to get interdimensional. And the tools have arrived. Not easy. What do you choose to do? Do you choose to go to there? Or is it too hard? Is it just a little too much out of reality that you don't want to attempt it? Or maybe your, your mind can't get into the program because you can't figure it out. Here are your instructions. Sit before God and be loved. And say, I'm ready to become interdimensional. To broach the veil without knowing why or how. Wide open. To feel the hand from the other side come out and grasp mine. Do you dare do that? Connection with the higher self? The one who was with you all the lifetimes is one of the keys to mining the Akash. And that's when you pick up the healing. Just when you thought there was no hope. You find out who you really are. <laughs> What's your choice? Too hard? Too unusual? Too spooky? Why, if you only knew how spooky each one of you were. <laughs> mm. Definition of spooky. Things which don't fit into 3D. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. It is, the system, beautiful, it is. Old souls, I see you complete. I don't see you in this lifetime with the gender that's pasted on your face. I see the precious human being as a piece of God. I'm your brother, I'm your sister, you're just like me. Choices. <laughs> Did you know? that if you mind the Akash, you change it all. Did you know, listen to me here, that if you go into the Akash and change anything, that it affects what happens next in your, left, in your next lifetime? Did you know that? You create a healed energy that stays healed. Did you know that? Just like the spiritual jar that continues to fill up if you are able to create health and a longer life for yourself in this lifetime, I will tell you that's etched into your DNA. And when you come back, no matter what soul you choose to be, that is the attribute that will be in your DNA. Think of what that means for humanity. We're almost done. How many of you are willing to touch the face of God? What's your choice about shift today? They're related, you know. They're very related, you know. A shift is at hand. It's been happening for some time now. You should have known it. When the world geopolitical scene changed so greatly. And you're in the middle of it. What's your choice? <coughs> you're going to be part of it? You're going to enhance it? Are you going to fear it? For these things is what drives the next stage. One of the things it'll drive is how fast you come out of this recession. And if you look at the experts, they will give you all manner of things to look at. No one has the answer. No expert could have told you you'd have had it. Not like this. And what's going to drive a fast recovery is choice. Your choice. Buy into it or not. Fear it or not. Participate or not. It's a big one, isn't it? Now you've got to see the microcosm. 
It's part of the macrocosm of the planet itself. What you do now, what you do in this time, drives how fast your recovery will be. You want to touch the face of the Creator? Ain't not that hard because that's you. You know there's peace there, dear human being. There are those in this room and say, I'd love to do all these things, cry on, I'd love to do all of this, it's just hard for me. I just don't know what's going on. And there are those who always cry and they say, you don't know what's going on with me. You don't. If you did, you couldn't say these things. Dear human being, we know everything that's going on and these things are said in integrity and they stick. They're for you. We know what you're going through. The moment you turn loose of the fear, you'll find manifestation. Touch the face of the higher self. Oh, the invitation for years to find your own self. To find the God part of you. To find the, the spirit part of you. You know who knew this? The very indigenous who walked this place where you are right now had ceremonies to do exactly what we're asking you to do. They called it other things. Some of them celebrated the, the four directions of the planet. That's magnetics. <laughs> and they wanted you to find a part of nature that they knew is balanced with you. That's the higher self. They knew it. It's not new information, but it's a new energy of enablement. Touch the face of the higher self today. I'm aware of who's here. What's going to happen tomorrow? Even some of the questions. It's a beautiful system, it is. Run by you. Planned by you. And here you are. And you're not helpless among it. You control it. And when you realize that and take that control, that's when peace starts to be yours forever. No drama. Oh, you'll have situations. There'll be challenges. That's humanity, isn't it? But they never had to affect you the same. Never. And so it is that this entity comes before you this day in this way. With the words that I have spoken this day about choice, about the love of spirit for humanity. Know this. You are no different than I. I speak to you from the other side of the veil, and I do. And some of you know I do. And yet, that is where you belong. This is temporary. Consider it a voice from home if you wish. There'll come a day, I promise, I promise, when we'll meet again in that hall of honor, and we will discuss this day with you, where we had a brief time together. Will you let me wash your feet? Sister. <laughs>